How are you guys doing with the heat? Everybody okay? Uh, it's fun in Texas. So we were in Birmingham and it was like 92, 93. And the people in the restaurant there was, oh, we can't stand this heat. And we're like, heat? This is not heat. Come to Austin. That's heat. And then I went online and I saw some, somewhere in Arizona, what, uh, Death Valley. It was like 121. So why are you complaining? God could have called you to Death Valley. I mean, <laughs> all right. Um, I want to talk to you about our vision of Rhythm of Grace. What can you expect? from this church, what, what do we plan to serve you with, if I can put it that way? Um, if you commit your life to the church, to Jesus and the church, what can you expect? Where, where will we go with your life? What do we plan? Is it just about coming Sunday, sing a few songs, listen to a word, and then we just hold until the day Jesus comes? Is that all we want to achieve, to have a full service on Sunday and that's good enough? I want to tell you no. We've got a strategy planned of where we want to go with each life. And, and we prayed of, about it, of course, but um, we also went and looked, what is your biggest needs in life? And I believe Jesus can help you with your biggest needs. So we've worked out four steps to a life that you've always been wanted to have, okay? Four steps to the life that you are dreaming about. Your biggest desires, your biggest needs, like if you go and study psychology, Maslow and all these guys, these clever people, they study people and they say, this is your need. This is the longing inside of you. This is the desire that drives you. We went and have a look, had a look at that, and then we started working on the vision of Rhythm of Grace. So what is these needs, these four steps that we're going to fulfill you? Um, a guy like Stephen Covey, I don't know if you say Covey, I've heard some people say Coffee or Kova. How do you pronounce? The guy who wrote? Covey. 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 Okay, Stephen Covey. All right. Poor guy. What we just did to his name. All right, but in any case... So Stephen Covey wrote, wrote a book many years ago, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People and Seven Principles and stuff like that. And in one of the books he wrote, um, the four biggest needs of any human being is to be loved, to love, to learn, and to leave a legacy. Now just think about that. That is the core desire of being a human. You want to be Loved. Come on, everybody. <laughs> don't be a tough Texan cowboy now, okay? <laughs> cowboy, don't cry in, in front of their horse. At least don't let your horse see you cry, okay? So we are tough. We don't need nothing. Come on. We need love. We want to be loved. Uh, I mean, just look at the way people buy dogs, okay? <laughs> Do you know why? A dog loves you. I mean, he's always happy to see you. I mean, I know I'm true. I mean, a, a cat, if you're a cat person, you're a little bit more private, okay? Cats are there, all right? Cat come in with an attitude, walk like this, you know? But a dog is always happy to see you, all right? And he always loves you. So why do we buy dogs? Because we want love. We want to be loved. As soon as you receive love and start receiving love, it's so much easier for you to give love, okay? So the first need, I want to be loved, and then I want to give love, I want to give stuff out, and then I want to learn, I want to grow. It's inside of every person. You grow in hobbies, you grow in whatever your world is that excites you. You want to grow, you want to become better, and the core desire at the end, we want to leave a legacy. You want to know what's your purpose in life. Why did God create me? So there's a new thing. Maybe some of you have worked with it. Uh, Chat GTP 
It's a, a, a new, like a search engine. You can put in anything, any question. You can give him any uh, note, sermon, essay, whatever, and he rewrites it with some of the best language, best stuff. And Chat GTP came out two, three weeks ago with this thing. The biggest question they received in 2023 was, what's the meaning of life? People are searching for, what's my purpose? Now, that's what we want to help you with. We want to help you find love. We want to, and it's not a dating site, relax, all right? We want to help you find love and love others and learn and leave a legacy. We're going to start with the, our main scripture, Mark 12, 28. This is the scripture that when they've asked Jesus, what's the most important thing in life? What is everything about in life? The most important command in the Bible. If you can summarize this thick book, how would you summarize this book? Jesus said, one of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating and noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answer Jesus, is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord with all your, uh, Lord God, with all your heart, with all your, your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater commandment than these. The center of this, love. See, we all desire love. And everything starts and ends with love. Why is that? Because God is love. Even the biggest atheist desires love. So what does he desire? He desires God. He, he, he might be fighting against God. You might be fighting against God and Jesus and religion and church and all of that. But in your core, you want love. You want God. He created you. You were made in His image and you want to reconnect with that. that that's the core desire and we want to help you. So how are we going to help you? I'm going to write on the whiteboard. I hope everybody can see in all the corners. And we're going to just start. It's in your bulletin as well, so you can follow there. But I just need to keep the teenagers uh, awake. That's why I'm going to write ugly, okay? Love. And now you see all of a sudden I don't get it in. Loved, okay? We want to be loved. That's our biggest need. If we start playing with this word, the letter L, it starts with the word lost. Lost or longing? Um, if we start here, it, it means something like you need to recognize that we all are lost in some way. For a lot of people, this is offensive. Don't call me lost, okay? I'm like, sure, well, fine. You longing. Do you have everything you want? Are you 100% secure in everything? In, in, in all of your life, and then there's, no, 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 there's a few things I might need. Exactly, we lost all longing in some area. Now, what I've learned, lost people are very important to God. I've heard the saying, lost people matter to God, so they must matter to us. Another saying, you've never set eyes on another human being who isn't very important to God or very valuable to God. So you've never set eyes on another human being who's not very valuable to God. Quickly, look at somebody. Go on, turn around, wake up, look to somebody. You've just set eyes on somebody that's very valuable to God. Not just average. Every human being is very valuable to God. And, and when we leave this place, if you go to a restaurant afterward, that server, that waiter, you've never set eyes on another human being who's not very valuable to God. All our neighbors, all the cars driving there on 71, you've never set eyes on another human being who's not 
valuable to God. And they need to be valuable for us, to us. We need to have the same heart when it gets, comes to lost people as Jesus did. So, so Jesus was so um, consumed with this calling of lost people at one time, he told three stories, three parables in a row to explain to people how God feels about lost people. It's in Luke 15. The first one is um, once the lady uh, lost a coin and she put up a light and she starts cleaning the whole house until she finds that lost coin. Right after he finished that story, he never done this before. He would tell a story and then leave and carry on with something else. But in this case, he carried on right after that story said, and then there was a shepherd. And he had a hundred sheep and he lost one. And he left the 99 at the one place and he went searching for the one. And right after that story, he would say, and then there was the prodigal son. Now, maybe you've heard the three stories. And the proof of that is lost people matter to God. Um, I had a little experience of losing one of my children, okay? Um, yeah, not a good dad. But in any case, so about nine years ago, I think, around about, Tuesday was about four or five. We went to the biggest farming, um, like, like uh, Austin Rodeo, but 10 times the size. It's the biggest farming fair in the southern he hemisphere. It was in South Africa. It's like 100,000 people a day coming through the gates, and it's the biggest tractors and nice stuff. So we were walking, looking at the animals, and the next moment, Juicy disappears. He was four or five years old. And of course, you think he's just there, just there, just there, and we start looking. We couldn't find him. Uh, long story short, uh, we found him only after about 40 minutes. So I went crazy. My personality, not good in situations like that. <laughs> Part of that was there was a policeman standing, chewing gum, against the pole with the radio hanging, and he was like. So at one point, I saw this guy, and I went up to him, and I'm like, thanks for helping, looking for my child. And he's like, they'll find him eventually, and oh, man, at that moment, I was almost in the newspaper for <laughs> pastor loving a guy to death, okay? And I'm like, help us. Close the gates. My wife ran to the, to the main office so that they close all the gates. I mean, human trafficking is a real thing. Uh, we were terrified, terrified. So for 40 minutes, I felt something about the heart of God for lost people. You know, he loves all of them. And they are his children that is blind, busy, confused, broken, lied to, and at this moment, they are lost to him. And he's like, I will leave the 99. Now, this is not good news for us sitting in the church. <laughs> you know what God is saying? I hear you, and I care about you very much, and I love you abundantly, but do you know there are lost people out there that I do care about also. And some days I will leave your prayer request and I will go to that one. Uh, for instance, let's say while we were looking for Juicy, AJ and Chloe, luckily the grandparents was with us and, and they had AJ and, and, and Chloe at that moment. But imagine Chloe coming up to me and say, Dad, 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 I want an ice cream. When can we get ice cream? I would be like, your brother is missing. Nowadays, she would say, yeah, keep him. But in any case, um, that day she would not say that she was little. But if they were consumed about their desires, what would I have done and said to Chloe at that moment? Baby, I'll get you ice cream. Right now, the priority is what? Just is missing. So many times in church, we pray for our ice cream while our neighbor is going to hell. And Jesus is like, 
Sometimes I leave the 99 to go after the one that is lost. Okay, you get it? Lost people matter to God and they must matter to us. We must move and help lost people to become open people. Open to God, open to Jesus, open to church, open to receive the love of God. And we assist in this, to move people from lost to open. The way how we assist in this, the way we can help, uh, you've got another word there on your bulletin. It's the word, we must bless them. Right. <laughs> this is beautiful, I must say. I give myself goosebumps some days. All right. Um, we must bless them. Genesis 12 to, uh, 12 to God came to Abram and says, I will greatly bless you to be a blessing to the nations. Again, I think the church has missed this sometimes. We want the prosperity. We want the bless. God bless me. But the reason God blessed me is to be a blessing. Be a blessing. The same God, you know, we want to save the blessing. We want to put it in a 401k fund. <laughs> we, we want to keep the blessing for me and my family. And God said, I will give you more. Don't be so afraid. But I've blessed you to be a blessing. So what does it mean to be a blessing? Quickly, you've got it there. Start praying, uh, begin to pray for friends and family and neighbors by name. I love doing this. Just not, Lord, I pray for everybody and bless them. No, start praying for them by name. And pray for an opportunity to meet them. So in our neighborhood, we just moved into the neighborhood uh, two years ago. And there's an app I think it's called Bless America. You can search it up, blessamerica.com. When you register on that app, it will give you your address if you register, and it will give you the names of all your neighbors. It's not actually hidden information, by the way. <laughs> I was like, wow, this is invading my privacy. I found out now it's fine. But in any case, they will give you the names of all your neighbors. And we started praying for all our neighbors by name. And part of the prayer is, Lord, give me an opportunity to meet them. <laughs> Not just a conversation, just, hi, we're from South Africa. We look crazy. We are crazy. My kids are crazy. I'm the only stable one. And, you know, <laughs> but, but just meet them. Just say hi. My wife is the best part. So everybody who meets me says I'm okay, but then they meet my wife and they're like, oh, she's amazing. All right, so... I take her worth, then the conversation goes well. But begin to pray for them by name. Then start to listen to them. This is a big problem for church people. We like to take over the conversation about Jesus, church, and Bible. And that's why when Christians start knocking on the door in neighborhood, people start running. Door-to-door okay? -door evangelism. Does it work? No, okay? Any of you giving your life over to the Jehovah Witness coming, knocking on your door? It doesn't work. Why? We must start to listen. Tell me your story. Tell me your life story. Tell me your concerns. Tell me your fears. Tell me your religious story. What happened to you in church? After you listen to them, you eat with them and engage life with them. This is the best part. I love this, okay? <laughs> you become friends and eat with them. Get involved in their lives. So let's run through it quickly. Then you look for an opportunity to serve them or support them. And after you've blessed them, you share your story and invite them. People, if we start becoming a blessing, we will not have enough seat in this little church if we just start to bless our neighbors and friends. 
not judge them, <laughs> not preach to them, not condemn them, not have signs in front of your house saying, this is the holy house of the Lord. No trick or treat in front of my house because we are holy. All right? <laughs> Have the biggest bag of candy in front of your house and bless your neighbors. And they will want to know who's the God of this house. People, we are called to bless. Not judge, not show them their faults, not preach. God blessed Abraham to bless people. Once uh, if you go back here, if we love on lost people by blessing them, they will become open. Open for what? They will become open for Jesus. I'm having fun today. Are you having fun? Thank you for the one yes. All right. <laughs> they will become open to Jesus. Now, Jesus, it's the name above all names. It's the name just Thursday night we saw in our Bible study. It's the only name under heaven and earth God has given through which a human being can be saved. But I don't know about you. If we just tell people you need to be open for Jesus, it feels a bit religious. So, so I went and played with the name of Jesus to make it easier for you and me to understand what does it mean when we say let's give Jesus Jesus to people. First of all, it is something about journey, the word, the Bible. I'm just going to put a big B there. The Bible needs to become an interesting book again. It needs to become a practical book for today. So many people think the Bible is 2,000 years old and it has no meaning for my life for today. When we start giving Jesus to people, the Bible needs to become like Jesus' life, stories. Stories about today, stories about farming, stories about weather, stories about a lost sheep, stories about children and all of It's stories in your life and you need to bring the Bible into people's life. They need to, hey, I like reading my Bible. It's good to read Bible. Next uh, word, the E is an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Jesus never stands alone, never. He never did anything while he was on earth in his own power. He said, I drive out demons or I heal the sick by the finger of God or the Spirit of God. So in every church service, we need to pray for the Holy Spirit to be among us. I can't change a life. Tommy can't change a life. <laughs> we can't even change our own lives, all right? We can't even change our wives. Have you tried? I've given up, all right? We, we, we can't, okay? I'm talking about myself. I know you guys have it sorted out, all right? We can't do anything. So we need the Holy Spirit. It's only the Holy Spirit that can change a life. Yes. So we need to journey the word, encounter the Holy Spirit, and then we need to take people to surrender at the feet of Jesus at the cross. This wooden cross, I love it in the church, I love it. This wooden cross is a symbol of my sin that the enemy came to steal and destroy and to kill me. But Jesus came that I might have life and life in abundance. So we need to take people to the cross and say, he paid for your sins. You can be forgiven. Your life can be set free of addiction. It can be healed. We need to take people to the gospel of Jesus. And they need to surrender at the feet of Jesus and at the cross. And then they need to undergo Baptism. When is the baptism? 11, 12th of September? Second Sunday of September? Second Sunday of September, we're going to have a baptism service at Lake Austin. It's going to be an amazing day, Sharon's place. And maybe that's your next step. 
maybe you've come to church now for a while and you've attended and you've opened up to the Word, you've opened up to the Spirit, you've even accepted Jesus and the cross, what He's done for you. Acts 2.38 says, Repent and be baptized and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Maybe your next step is to undergo baptism. And that's your next step in your spiritual journey. And lastly, when we give Jesus, um, they will be ready to share their own testimony and their own story. So, from last to open, when we bless them and we give them Jesus. That's step one. We want to help people to get to know God. Step two, three, four, I'll do next week. I'll quickly give it to you because you've got it in the bulletin. It is, it will open you up to volunteer your time to grow. Now it seems simple, but if you are busy young people like us with four kids, high school, middle school, elementary school, (laughs) kids in all three, to volunteer my time to grow, it's very difficult. But it's a choice you make from lost to open, from open to volunteer to grow. Why? Because inside of me there's a, there's a burning, a yearning, a desire. I want to grow. I don't just want to be busy. <laughs> I want to grow out of my pain. I want to grow out of my brokenness. I want to grow into healing. I want to grow into freedom. So volunteer your time to grow. From volunteering, you will go to engaging. Engage means now you start to discover God's purpose for your life. You understand your gifting. Everybody has a gift, your personality, your passions. And we're going to help you with all of this. We've got material uh, prepared and ready to share with you to help you to get to engage. And lastly, your life will make a difference. And like Stephen Covey and Jesus and everybody said, your biggest desire as a human being is to leave a legacy, to make a difference. The young people search on chat GTP, what's the meaning of life? Why am I here? I want to make a difference. I want to change the world. So step one is just to grow from lost to open by getting to know Jesus and being known by him. Step two is from lost or from open to volunteering. That is to find freedom, to grow into freedom. We've got seven rhythm courses we've prepared. It's online, small group, all of that. Then from, uh, from volunteer to grow to engage is now I need to discover who I am. I need to discover myself, grow in self-love. Love myself. And then if you start discovering who you are, you will start to make a difference. You will become part of the volunteer group or the dream team where we serve other people. Tommy, if you don't mind, will you come and play on the piano for us? I want to close us in prayer. Um, Because maybe this morning, there are people here saying, I haven't been open to God as much as I was supposed to be. But lately, there's an opening in my heart. I can feel there's an opening coming where I want to know more about the Bible, where, where I want to encounter, where I want to surrender at the cross. And I don't want this opportunity to go by that we don't just make sure we're busy with step one. <laughs> Do you want to know God? Do you want to go from lost to open for more of Jesus? The way to do that is just to surrender. Just to say, Lord, I need you. I can't save myself. I can't save my kids. I can't change myself. I can't change this broken world. I can only surrender. And and we want to make sure that 
you get that opportunity right now. It will not be weird, don't worry. We will not call you to the front and everybody looking at you and stuff like that. It's between you and God. It's not between you and me. It's between you and God. Do you want to surrender your life to Jesus? From lost and longing to open. And say, Lord, I surrender all to you. Maybe you're sitting here, you've surrendered before. But your next step is maybe, Lord, you've blessed me. I need to become a blessing to other people. Start writing down names you're going to start praying for. Oh, yeah. where's the guy? Start writing down names you're going to pray for. Think of who you're going to start listening to, who you're going to eat with, who you're going to serve and support so that you can be a blessing to them. Tommy, do you know that song, I'll, I'll Surrender? Yes. To Jesus, I surrender all to Him. I freely give. Why will ever trust and trust Him? Sorry. In His presence daily. Today is the day I surrender. And like I've said, if you've done it before, maybe today is the day you go to the next step. Lord, I volunteer my time to grow. Maybe you've done that also. Then it's your next step. Maybe today is the day you say, Lord, I need to engage back into a broken world. And I need to start blessing my world as much as possible. And then, I know some of you personally that you've been doing this for a long time. And you are the guy who can stand up and tell people, this is the life I've always been wanted. I want to love and be loved. I want to learn and I want to make a difference with my life. And it's worth it. It's worth it. So right now, make that decision. What is your next step? Maybe your next step is baptism. Second Sunday in September, we'll do that. What is your next step? Heavenly Father, I come now and I pray for every person in this room. We have desires, we have needs. There's a life I've always wanted. And the four steps to that life starts with getting to know you. Open up to you. Open up to Jesus. Jesus is not a weird religious figure. Jesus is the God who died for me. Paid the price on the cross. And now I surrender my life to Jesus. I say, Lord Jesus, have my sin, have all my problems, have all my own attempts of righteousness. And I exchange it for your eternal life right now. Thank you, Jesus, that right now you are saving people, you are forgiving people, you are setting people free to start following their purpose. Start following their calling. And that is to make a difference. To bless this world. To make this world a better place with Jesus. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
that in this moment you have forgiven people, saved people, set people free, and made people new. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you so much, everybody. That was step one. Next week, I'll run through step two, three, and four. Uh, just what we're going to do here at Rhythm Church, how we're going to help you with that, and how you can discover your purpose, how you can make a difference in this world and change the world around you. So that's the vision of Rhythm of Grace Church. Uh, if you don't mind, you want to stand, and I'm going to do a blessing over you. Anything else I need to announce? All good, Tommy? Let's stand, and then you receive the blessing for this coming week. Coming week. Heavenly Father, just like you've said to Abraham, I will greatly bless you. You are saying this to these people right now. I will greatly bless you. Bless you in your body. Bless you in relationships. Bless you in finance. Bless you in healing. I will greatly bless you. Thank you for that, Father. But you said to Abraham, so that you can be a blessing to others. Lord, help us this week to be a blessing to our friends and our neighbors, to start praying for them, start listening to them, eat and engage with them, look for an opportunity to serve and support them. And then if the Lord's willing, invite them to a service. Thank you, Lord. We will be a blessing to our neighbors in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Great day. See you again.